Hello, today I'm taking a look at the nicely snappily titled FS6706T. This is a six bay Nash drive. While I'm unpacking, let me just throw up the specs for you. It's got a quad core Intel Celeron processor. As I say, it can take six drives and they're the M.2 variety. It's got two ports on the back as well as HDMI out and this looks more like a console than a traditional NAS drive. There you can see a USB port on the front. If I just flip it around to the back you can see the power in, another USB, HDMI out, the two networking ports, a couple more USBs and the SPDIF port. Along with the NAS you get a couple of network cables as well as a quick start guide and the power brick. There's no drives included, you'll need to supply those. So this is very different from what I'm used to. My traditional NASs are more of a taller boxy design, whereas this is a squatter console-like design. It looks pretty cool. And the reason for the change is the change in drives. Traditionally, you would use these larger, bulky hard drives, and these are a lot cheaper than the newer variants, but they are noisy and they do take up a lot of room. So in the new NAS, I'll be using these M.2 drives. Specifically, I'll be using a few of them. These are by a Pacer and they are a NAS specific SSD. I've never used these outside of a computer before, so I was very interested to see how they compare to the traditional drive and I have not been disappointed. There's some tech specs for you, but I do encourage you to check out the manufacturer's website for more details. I found there's only really two main benefits to the traditional system. The first is installation is a little bit easier because you can take out this drive caddy, pop the drive in and then slot it back and they're a little bit cheaper. And that's really it on the new system. For installation you have to flip the NAS over, unscrew four screws, slide off this back plate and be careful when you do this because you'll notice it has a USB plug and that's to power the fan that's going to keep everything cool. Then you've got access to the inside and it's got the six slots ready and waiting. This can be a little bit tricky and it's a little bit nerve wracking if you've never installed it because they feel wafer thin and quite delicate, but actually it was very easy. Once you've done one, you can slap in all six when you're ready or just start with two. Now it's worth noting, I've got two one terabytes, but I'm not gonna have two terabytes of space because the NAS will automatically configure this as a RAID array. So the two one terabytes will give me one terabyte of space and if a drive fails, it's not a problem, the other drive will have the same content on it. You'll know when a drive fails because there'll be a beeping noise and a red flashing light and when you head over to the storage management area you'll see it says degraded. At that point you need to replace the drive. Once you've completed the setup you can access the web interface dashboard and this is the OS for the NAS. It's very easy to use, you've just got a range of icons, it's a little bit like a mobile interface and then if we just swipe to the right, swipe back to the left, that's where the icons will go and you can rearrange these and if you drop them on you can create a folder, which I don't want to do for that one, but super easy to use. Out the box you'll get all the basic apps for managing the NAS and then if you want extra things such as Plex or VirtualBox, you simply head to the app, central app. And this is where the NAS really comes into its own because you can add a load of extra apps and that will give you lots of different functionality. So to install Plex on an Asus or NAS, all you have to do is find it in the app library and click the install button. You'll then go to its web interface and follow the setup procedure. Let's head over to the categories as there's a ton of different categories you can use to enhance the NAS. So if you are a live streamer, you'd go here, you check out Acetor Live, and then when you click on one of these, it will give you a description as to what the app does. There's lots for you to explore. If we say all apps rather than the categorization, you can see there's absolutely loads of them. So there's bound to be something here that will help you enhance your NAS experience and get things set up. Now, what else is interesting? You might have noticed things like Disney Plus and Amazon, and this has a HDMI cable, so you can plug it into your TV and have a TV interface, which then allows you to run these apps there's tons of settings, I'm not going to go through them all, but one that you'll probably want to check out 
is under network and network interfaces and this is where you can add a VPN so if you've picked up a lifetime deal such as keep solid VPN you can add that here and that just adds that little bit of extra security to your NAS the other one I wanted to flag because I think this has um, some interesting options is you can install VirtualBox and it will run Windows so you can assign a portion of the drive to act like a Windows PC or you can install different uh, operating systems as well. I just happen to have installed Windows. And once it's running, this will now run a Windows PC on the NAS. Now it's not super speedy, it's not an amazing Windows PC, but do you know what, for basic tests, if you've got something that you need to leave running overnight, um, I've been experimenting with something called Zimwriter that writes blog posts. I can leave that running overnight, turn off my PC, and the NAS will carry on running the program um, all the time, it'll just leave it on. One of the key benefits of investing in a NAS is building your own data center. Effectively, you can have your own little Google Photos or Netflix all in one place. And to support that, you've got a good range of apps so that when you're out and about, you can still access your files, your photos, you can manage the drive, and you can even install security cameras and use it as a security system. So you're very well supported and you can see that these are mostly available on both Android and iOS and in some cases also Apple TV. I'm loving this new version of the NAS drive. It's so much quieter. I don't have to listen to the chirp, chirp, chirp of hard drives. There is a 12 bay version available if you want to really go for the space. I'll put affiliate links below so you can get more information about both the NAS and the drives I've used in it. Thanks for watching.